Hey y'all, it's the wig pharmacist and I have finally started my channel after three years of procrastination and we are about to have a lot of fun on this channel. This is going to be a channel for fashion, beauty, hair, of course, lifestyle and business. Um, as many people know, I will be getting more into the business side of things. I'll be um, launching uh, marketing classes and um, things like that. I actually go to school for marketing. I'm a business and digital marketing student. So we're going to be able to get into all those things shortly. But today, sis, today is a story time. Yes, it's a story time. And as you can tell, this is about to be some tea, right? So pour yourself a glass, get your drinks out. Y'all know I love me some pop. And we're just gonna like, just, I guess, laugh at my pain. So, as you can tell by the title, I'm gonna say, I call the title The Client from Hell. This story is the reason why I no longer do house appointments and I never will. Unless you Beyonce or you some type of celebrity, maybe. But beloved, if you live in the peas, do not ask me to come over. Disclose that first, please, for my own safety. Anyways, so uh, this happened three years ago. And this is when I first said, okay, yo, this is a YouTubeable video. When I tell my clients these, this story, I'll be doing their hair and they're on the floor. Like, yo, girl, like I have the flat iron in my hand. You on the floor dying of laughter. Like, but it's not funny because this is a real story. This really happened to me. I'm traumatized, PTSD all of that like bro every time i drive past this intersection i just remember what <laughs> took place so let's get into this story so this happened in 2018 when i first started my business if you don't know i have a hair business you can find me on instagram the wig pharmacist um this is when i first started to do hair maybe three or four months into doing hair so i was doing all kind of silly things just to get clients um, I had this friend, he was my friend, but I guess he had like a crush on me or whatever and he was trying to impress me. So he's like, yo, um, my sister wants her hair done. Um, can you do her hair? And I said, sure, no problem. Can she come to me? He's like, yo, she got and she cannot come to you. So I said, oh, okay. So I guess I'll go to her. I don't drive or anything at the time because as you guys, there's a story coming up to why I don't have a car anymore. I'm gonna drop that story. My car was stolen. By a crook, by a thief, by germs, by a parasite, but- I'm a, That's a story for another time. Um, so basically, she, um, he started, he's like, oh, you have to go to her house to do her hair. And I said, okay, cool, I'll do her hair. I, I have a whole salon in my garage, but okay, um, no problem, because. I can only imagine what it's like to pack up in a car and just like try to like bring them. Like, could you imagine that? So I'm like, you know, whatever, I'll, I'll help her out or whatever. And I told him like, you know, this is paid. Like, you know, she, you know, she got to pay me. And he's like, why wouldn't she pay you? Like what kind of, he's trying to make me feel dumb. He's like, you're what kind of idiot thing is that? Like, why wouldn't she pay you? I said, okay. I tell my best friend at the time and everyone knows if you know, I had this best friend, me and her were like this, like, we would go everywhere together. So I called my best friend at the time. Um, and I'm like, yo, so-and-so wants me to do his sister's hair. Um, and she's like, oh, okay, I'll take you. I That's the kind of friend she was. I never had to ask for a ride. She'll always be like, um, do you want me to give you a ride? So she's like, okay, I'm coming with you. So, so the day comes and his sister calls me and she's like a thick Jamaican accent. So I'm like, oh, she's probably like a real yardie. 
So she's like, oh, you know, um, she's like, oh, yeah, um, are you going to come to do my hair today? And I'm like, yeah, of course. I'm coming. I remember. Don't worry. I didn't forget. And she's just like, okay, yeah, I heard you're my brother's girlfriend. I was like, your brother's what? Your brother's who what? Friend. That's a female. Yeah. We're friends. She's like, oh, no, his girlfriend. Like, she's like, I never see you at the house. I'm like, girl, fool, girl, what? Girl? Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? That's, That's not me. Not me. <laughs> so I'm like, kind of playing, like, not really along, but I'm like, oh, we're friends. Yeah. And she's like, well, you know what? We have a lot to talk about when you come over. So she's, um, she still didn't give me her address. So um, she's like, oh, ask my brother for the address. So I, I asked her brother for the address and he sends me the address. And it says North York, right? I'm from Brampton. So I've lived in Brampton for most of my life. I was born in Toronto, but I moved to Brampton like at a, like eight. So I don't really not, know nothing about Toronto life. When he gave me the address, I really didn't know where it was. But when I went there, gentrification have, has not visited this area. So <laughs> most of Toronto is gentrified. Like if you live in Toronto, you know, like almost everywhere has been a victim of gentrification. Not this. I was shocked. I was driving past this house like two, three times. Cause I'm like, I know it's not that abandoned building over there across the street. It cannot be, that cannot be the address. This spooky looking place that looks like it belongs in a horror film. Um, so I get to her house and I was like, bruh. Okay, we're in the hood. We're in the hood. We are located in the hood. We have arrived. My best friend is beside me talking Gaza. Cause me and her are the same, we're like, girl, where are we? We from the suburbs, Jesus. We get to the building door and we can't, we trying to buzz ourselves in, buzz ourselves. Let me add, let me add, it is nine o'clock at night because she works during the day and that's the only time that we could come to her house. It's nine. So not only are we in a place that we don't know, pitch black, looks like an abandoned building. Um, it's nine, it's 9 p.m. We don't know the area. Um, there's a buzzer on the door, I guess for security, <laughs> security. So no one breaks into this abandoned building. So I'm like, okay, um, I call her and I'm like, yo, we're in the front. She's like, okay, um, I'm going to open up the door. So the door opened for us, fam. When I'm telling you, pieces of the ceiling are falling down. Like when you know, you know how they have those checkerboard ceilings, pieces of the feeling ceiling is falling down. I know this place, maintenance has quit years ago. Like lights are blinking. Like what if I was like epileptic? I'd have been done for. I've never seen a building so neglected in Canada. But like Canada, I thought we were better than that. Anyways, the way that they were not taking care of the place, we should have been signed number one. Girl, I get to the front door and it actually looks pretty nice inside. It was like one of those buildings in her apartment. It was one of those buildings where they are an apartment, but it has an upstairs inside the apartment. It's like, it's kind of sick. Like it looks like an apartment, but you can go, you have upstairs to go to an upstairs. If you get what I'm getting into the building, me and my friend are there and there's bare kids everywhere, which we expected because she said she has eight kids. So there's kids from every size, every gender there. She is there. So we're there and she didn't, she didn't greet us at the door. So like one of the four year olds or three year olds opened the door and I'm like, oh, okay. That this is, that's safe. Um, so she's in the kitchen. She's like, oh yeah, come inside. And I go inside and like the place is, it's nice cause nicer than what I thought it would look like, but it was still kind of like messy, but you know, you have kids. Um, so one of the kids, he had to be no older than four years old was just going ham watching. Oh, like, I don't know if it was BET or music, what a much music, one of those two, but he was watching something and post Malone was on it and that little kid 
knew every word to the song. And I was like, what is happening? Not, what happened to mommy shark, daddy shark? Do, 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 do. Nah, he knew the whole Post Malone song. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know that whole song? And he's like, yeah, Post Malone's my dad. I was like, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think he's your dad. I don't think so. <laughs> no. So she comes out of the kitchen. She greets us. And so she tells us to take up a chair from the kitchen and do her hair in the kitchen. And I was like, okay, sure. Um... I don't know if it was because it was nighttime, but my eyes were, were give, it was a minute for my eyes to adjust, right? It's dead of winter too. I think it was about February, dead of winter. So, cause me and my friend, we both had winter jackets. So my friend takes off her jacket and puts it on the lady's chair. And I, I um, take off my jacket and I put it on the seat of the chair, not on the back of the chair. So, She's there, she's sitting there, she lights up a spliff and starts blowing the smoke, blowing the smoke. So I'm like, okay, I don't smoke anymore. Just F my fresh air and my breathing and my lungs, period. Somebody been smoking and drinking. 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 Period. So she's blowing the smoke in our face because for whatever reason, she's blowing the smoke, living her best life. Didn't ask, oh, you know, do you guys mind? Like, she's just like, yo, I'm in my house. I'm smoking in front of you guys. I'm blowing it in your nostrils. If you get lung cancer, that's your business. So now my sis is there and we're talking. She's pretty cool. She's a cool lady, you know, and we're there and I don't know if it was our presence or what. But I started to basically examine my where I was. Started taking out my tools, because after I was taking out my tools, I wasn't, like you know you get somewhere you're just looking through your stuff and you don't really take in where you are? So I start looking around, I was like, is that what I think those are? On the wall, everywhere? It was literally an infestation of roaches everywhere. Like I said, I lived in Toronto, so I know roaches. But the roaches we had in Willow Ridge, they were polite. They had manners. They knew when company was over, you stay under the heating vent. You don't come out. And you come out when all the lights are off. How dare you come out when the lights are on? where we could see you. They were everywhere. I wish I was joking, everywhere. And my friend, I could tell, cause yo, she, I'm more of the nice one. She was the rude one. So she's more like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I keep hearing her say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we know each other. So I know when she makes a sound, she's trying to say, yo, see? Something I go on here that I don't like. And I'm like, She's making a sound, so I'm like, yo fam, you're making it so hot, relax. Like, you know, let's make this money and go. Bro, sis would not sit down and let me do her hair. So she was doing, like, I, I put on the cap, then she'd go put on something on the stove. Then I put on the, the, um, the got to be glue, she'll take one of her kids, change the diaper. Then she'll get up, take a, um, get another split. I'm like, yo, this hair should take me about 45 minutes. This shit took me two hours. So I'm like, fam, it, all in my head, I'm like, fam, I just want to go. I want to go. I want to go. Cause you ever been somewhere and you just, your shoes are off and you're just on your tippy toes. Cause everything's just so crony. So I guess she notices us like standing on our tippy toes and she's like, oh, don't mind the little roach them. You know, it's a little section eight Metro O's in. So, you know, um, just don't mind them. This is where they live. I said, what? <laughs> this is their welcomed guest. She's like, this is where they live. I'm like, okay, <laughs> all right, buddy. Um, so we're like, my friend though, she's like uncomfortable. She, she's sitting like, she doesn't want her, her skin to touch nothing. She's like this, um, all bundled up. So 
I'm kind of like on my tippy toes doing her hair because just I just felt gross. And my girl is just making the most noise because I guess her jacket was touching the wall. <laughs> and she's like, she starts making like these weird noises, like, mm -hmm. so I'm like, girl, what the hell's wrong with you? So she just gets up and she puts up her puts on her jacket again because she's like, fam, <laughs> that's not happening right now. I'm not about to let my jacket touch the wall because literally up and down the wall, roaches up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, f crawling on the walls. So I'm doing her hair and we're talking, bro. Across the wall, I notice a roach looking directly at me. And I thought me and the roach had an understanding cause he was looking directly at me and I'm looking back at the roach. I'm like, yo, whatever you do, follow the rhythm and tech away yourself. Do not come near me. The roach is just like, all right, bet. He starts crawling up the wall, up the ceiling. And I said, Lord, please. Please let this roach go back to where it was on the wall. Can you believe this disrespectful roach? And I wish I was lying. I'm traumatized. This roach, big, I wish I, you guys know those big roaches? Like the ones that are like this big. That's the kind of roaches I'm talking about. They're big, small, but this big roach, this big. It was on the ceiling directly above me. And I'm, I'm tall, okay, I'm 5'9", so I was very close to the ceiling. And I'm like, yo, this roach is directly above my wig. Please stay where you are or go somewhere else, please. Bro, can you believe this, ro this roach plonced off of the top of the ceiling and felt that, I felt that thing brush my eyelashes. Like that thing dived down. I said, yo, I'm ready to go home. I'm like, yo, I've been defiled and I couldn't say anything. Bro, do you understand? I had to take that thing like it was a shot of Hennessy. All I could say is, mm, 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 mm. Cause I don't want her to feel bad that, you know, we noticed the roaches. So this thing fell and now it's at my toes. So I'm really just standing on my two big toes. Like, I know she saw me elevate this a little bit. It was probably like, yo, what's wrong with this girl? So I'm there trying to do the wig quick, 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 quick. Bro, I finished her hair. She loves it. She's like, yo, I have to come back to you when I come back from Jamaica. And I said, yeah. Or like, no, she's like, you have to come back here when you come back to Jamaica and do my hair all the time. Cause you know, you're my brother's girlfriend. And I had to be like, no, you know, we're just friends. Um, not your brother's girlfriend. Um, I'm not anybody's girlfriend, please, please. So she's like, it's okay. You don't have to be shy around me. I'm not one of those who mind. I'm okay. So she's like, okay, let me walk you back home because now it's about maybe 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock at night. So let me walk you back, not to home, but to the car, right? And I'm like, okay. She walks us back to the car. So I'm thinking she's gonna walk us back to the car and like slap me some money or whatever for doing her hair. Bro. You see my hand? Oh no, my hand's empty. Oh no. So I'm like, she daps us up. I'm thinking she's gonna daps me with my, with my money in my hand. I don't know why she came outside. She came outside in her jacket. So I'm thinking that maybe the money's in her jacket pocket. So I'm looking, she daps us and she's like, okay, get home safe. So I'm still looking at my hand. I'm like, it's still empty. Like there's, there's nothing here. It's still empty. But she was kind of intimidating. Like, you know, those Jamaicans who are bleached out, tattooed up. And you know, Jamaicans aren't really nice. So she was like one of those, mm -hmm, like the people that serve you that, you know, that ox still, they don't really, they don't, they're not really the, the, the friendliest. So I didn't want to upset her cause she could have had, I don't know. She could have had a gun on her. She looked like it. She looked like she had like some type of weapon on her. She looked like a gangster, like one of those Jamaican girls. So I'm like, yo, did I really just stand for three hours on my foot? Tippy toes to not get paid. I just went through terrorism to not get paid. 
I just survived fear factor to not get paid. So I'm like, my friend's getting mad now. She's a hothead. Like she's short. <laughs> but she a hothead. So she's like, yo, are you dumb? Let's go back there. I said, let's go back where? I said, no, I'm about to pay. I'm going to call her brother and tell her brother that he transfer me my money. So we're in the car. Before we get in the car, my friend takes off her jacket. She's like, yo, that place was so nasty. Bro, I don't even want to put my jacket on. My girl takes her jacket and we're on the highway. We're on the 410 going home. She takes her jacket and she dashes the jacket out of the... um window and i'm on the floor dying i'm like i can't dash this jacket out this is expensive i just have to shake it out before i got home because i'm like once you get one roach into your house family your house is done for your road <laughs> your house is about to be 90 percent roach once you get one in i just made sure i shook it out before i even got home because i didn't want none of those problems i even left the coat in the car just in case so she came and it's the dead of winter, you know, so my friend, she'd rather have been in her tank top than to have that jacket on her. She just dashed it out on the highway. She's like, no, sir, this was not worth it. So, and on top of that, we didn't get paid. Bro, all we, we weren't even mad. We just started to die of laughter. We're like, yo, did we really just get played like that? Like, I don't, I, I don't know what to, I don't know what to say. I go to my friend's house and we tell her mom what we just went through and she's and her mom's like mm -mm, some people yeah just nasty you know Jamaican people when they hear a traumatizing story so they're like her mom's like so you guys have to get paid there's no way in hell that you're not gonna get paid so I call the girl's brother and I'm like yo dude which is my friend I'm a like, guy my guy why did you tell this girl that I'm your girlfriend he's like I never said that I never said that. I'm like, clearly you did. Cause she thought we were like, she's getting a family discount or something. Like even my mama has to pay whenever she gets her hair done. Are you guys crazy? So she's like, he's like, um, I, I don't know why she thought she didn't have to pay. I'm going to hit her up. So he hits her up and then she calls me back and she's like, um, pissed. She's like, yo, why are you acting like I can't do that? Like she's getting mad. I'm like, this girl is going to like kill me. So I'm like, I was just thought that you were gonna pay me. She's like, well, I'm I'm your your um boyfriend's sister, and you can't even give me a hairstyle. And I said, I don't have a boyfriend, miss, ma'am. I don't have one. So I don't know where to get a story from. So she's like, you know what? Meet me on Thursday around the same time, and I'll give you your money. I said, mm -mm. <laughs> hell no. I'm not going back over there for my money. E-transfer me. She, no, I don't have e-transfer. Meet me and I'll give you your money. I'm like, mm -mm. this girl's going to stab me or shoot me or something. So I'm like, nah, <laughs> nah, I got a kid. I can't go. I can't go out like that. So I call him back and I start going ham on him because I know he liked me. So I'm like, yo, you done told your sister this, 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 that. And now she never paid me. Like, what do you take this for? Da, da, da. So he's like, you know what? I'll e-transfer you the money. I'm like, how much is it? It was 50, but I'm like, it's $150, fam. What are you talking about? Like, you think that's a little bit of money? So he's just like, yo, I'll give you the, I'll give you 200. And I was like, that's all I asked. That's all I asked for. So in the end, I got compensated handsomely, but the trauma, no amount of money, no amount of money can cover up what I went through in that house of horrors. Like, I don't know. This is one of my, these are my clients' favorite stories. They actually were the ones that told me this should be my first story time. But that is the reason why I no longer do home appointments. I do not, I can't be traumatized again. I've just recovered. Like, comment, subscribe. You done know how to ting go. Alrighty. Um, thanks for coming and filling your prescription with the wig pharmacist later.